Have you ever wondered why science and faith so often collide? Even though both seek the truth, imagine a man whose single idea turned physics upside down and opened the door to the quantum world, yet who at the same time insisted that science, without deep metaphysical roots, is only half the story. This is the story of Max Planck, the great physicist, creator of quantum theory, and the most reluctant revolutionary in science, who nevertheless saw himself as deeply religious, even if not in the traditional Christian sense. How can that be? And why was it precisely he, a modest professor from Germany, who dared to challenge classical physics and then offered something far greater than just another formula? Stay with us until the end of this episode to discover how faith, philosophy, and science can unite in a single life, and what astounding conclusions follow from that. Be sure to share your thoughts in the comments below. Perhaps your perspective will become the next step in our endless search for truth. Max Karl Ernst Ludwig Planck was born in 1858 in Kiel, Germany. His family consisted of highly educated lawyers and Protestant pastors. His interest in physics sparked early in high school thanks to a brilliant teacher who brought complex equations to life with stories and experiments. When his family moved to Munich, Max continued his classical education and then entered the University of Berlin, where he attended lectures by the celebrated scientists of the time, Kirchhoff and von Helmholtz. Yet his first scientific steps were far from triumphant. His supervisors didn't rush to praise his work, and some of his ideas had already been published by the American physicist Willard Gibbs. Any disappointment could have killed his passion for research, but Planck persisted. He believed that physics should be defined by fundamental laws, so he concentrated on the most root problems. That eventually led him to the study of blackbody radiation and to the famous constant, H. When his research on energy quantization was first presented in 1900, the world of science was jolted. Classical physics seemed to crumble before everyone's eyes. Planck made a daring proposal. Energy isn't emitted continuously, but rather in discrete packets. Quanta. Imagine how his colleagues reacted. For decades, everyone had believed energy changed smoothly, and now along comes a professor claiming it's chunked. At first, even Planck himself refused to believe his own conclusions. The new theory felt like a revolution threatening to dismantle his cherished classical physics. However, as experiments consistently confirmed the formula, and nature itself seemed to whisper agreement with the idea of quantized energy, Planck surrendered to the evidence. His passion for truth outweighed his fear of the unknown. He realized that if the facts said, yes, the world works differently, he had to accept it and look further. Perhaps there were deeper laws at play than people had ever imagined. Question to the viewers. What would you have done in Planck's place? Could you abandon your long-held worldview if you discovered it was fundamentally flawed? Let us know in the comments. This challenge extends not only to physics but to any person in pursuit of truth. We often imagine a scientist as a purely rational mind, living by experiments and equations alone. Yet Planck combined rigorous scientific work with deep philosophical thinking. He argued that pure empirical knowledge cannot justify itself. Science, he insisted, isn't built just on facts but also on certain assumptions, like faith in the idea that the world follows laws and that human reason can discover those laws. Without that kind of metaphysical platform, we wouldn't even be able to form questions about nature. As Planck jested, if science has absolutely no basic premises, it ends in a kind of logical dead-end solipsism where one can only be sure of one's own consciousness. To escape that trap, we need a kind of spiritual support, a belief in the ordered nature of reality. Planck wasn't afraid to call that support faith. Don't get the wrong idea. This wasn't specifically religious faith in the classical sense. Rather, it was a conviction that the universe isn't chaos but an orderly system. 
This underpins the entire idea of scientific inquiry. If we didn't believe in the existence of consistent laws, scientific progress would stall. In his scientific autobiography, Planck recalled how, as a teenager, he was struck by the thought that the laws of human reasoning coincide with the laws governing the world around us. In other words, our minds can decipher the mechanisms of the universe precisely because the world itself follows logical principles we employ in our experiments. That sounds inspiring, but how does it fit with the fact that Planck himself spent so long rejecting his own quantum hypothesis, which appended classical logic? The paradox is that belief in a rational universe doesn't imply it's simple by our standards. When experiments shouted, energy comes in quanta, Planck gave in, choosing truth over personal comfort. It was realism in conflict with old viewpoints, but not with objective reality. Planck often emphasized that science is not just cold fact-gathering, but a creative process in which the scientist's own personality, taste, mindset, and values plays a huge role. He criticized the cliché science without assumptions, pointing out that every researcher inevitably operates under personal beliefs or mental models, especially when empirical data isn't yet conclusive. He even suggested that choosing which experiment to do first already involves the scientist's internal ideas. Later, philosophers like Michael Polanyi introduced similar notions about tacit knowledge, in which subjective elements guide us toward objective discoveries. Do you agree that a scientist can't be fully impartial? Or should we at least aim to eliminate all personal biases in scientific processes? Share your stance in the comments, whose viewpoint resonates with you. Beyond science, the threshold where mystery begins. Over time, Planck grew convinced that scientific inquiry inevitably leads us to a boundary beyond which lies the unknowable mystery. In one of his talks, he confessed, science cannot solve the ultimate mystery of nature because we ourselves are part of nature. It's reminiscent of Ludwig Wittgenstein's famous line, whereof one cannot speak, thereof one must be silent. To Planck, this wasn't a call to surrender. Rather, it was recognition that while our mind can delve very far, it eventually meets an impenetrable depth, unreachable by formulas or instruments. And at this ultimate edge of scientific knowledge, Planck spoke of reverence. For him, Science elevates our moral spirit because it demands years of painstaking work and a relentless quest for truth. Faced with the vast puzzle of existence, we can't help but feel awe, standing at that boundary where the rational and the irrational merge. Science and religion, contradiction or alliance. In his later years, Max Planck frequently stated that science and religion are not adversaries but allies. They fight a perpetual crusade against skepticism and superstition, marching onward to God, he liked to say. Yet he did not mean a blind acceptance of biblical miracles or a literal reading of scripture, but rather a religious sense of harmony underlying all of nature. This line of thought is similar to Albert Einstein's idea of a cosmic religious feeling in the scientist who perceives the universe as an awe-inspiring enigma beyond our petty ambitions. Planck believed we must distinguish between methods, experimentation, mathematics, and deeper motivations, search for meaning, wonder at nature's order. The first set operates in the realm of facts, whereas the second set inevitably leads to ethical, spiritual questions, and perhaps to the idea of God, not necessarily personal, but rather a supreme rational principle. Planck's personal faith. Many have wondered whether Max Planck was religious in the traditional sense. The answer is not so simple. He was raised in a family of Lutheran pastors, but shortly before his death in 1947, he admitted he didn't believe in a personal God, certainly not in the strict Christian version yet he simultaneously insisted he was a deeply religious man. Paradox? More likely, it reflects his conviction that religion need not be a rigid dogma, but is 
above all, a reverent attitude toward a world that is fundamentally ordered. Moreover, Planck's life was marked by tragedy. He lost family members in both world wars and endured bombing raids. This may have affected his personal spiritual trajectory, keeping it from aligning with any traditional confession. Even so, he repeatedly emphasized that despite dark historical catastrophes, faith in a higher meaning of human existence sustained him. Planck often spoke of a single foundation for all physical processes. He believed that sooner or later we'd find one overarching law or set of laws explaining everything, from quantum scale phenomena to colossal cosmic structures. Later, Einstein adopted this idea in his quest for a unified field theory. Today's researchers continue down similar paths, standard model refinements, string theory, loop quantum gravity, and in a sense, all of these can be traced back to Planck's vision that there must be an overarching harmony behind our world's apparent complexity. Critics sometimes say, why all this metaphysical glimmer? Let's stick to the facts. But Planck pointed out that facts alone are just puzzle pieces. To arrange them in a coherent picture, we need a fundamental trust that they are indeed connected. And the deeper we dig, the more complex the questions get, and the more pressing becomes this issue. Why does science work at all? The answer, Planck believed, lies in trusting that the universe is rational and consistent. If you abandon that premise, you land in a swamp of endless interpretations where any single anomaly can overturn the entire framework. Science, however, flourishes because of a confidence that nature isn't constantly deceiving us with random tricks but operates by stable laws. Even if we have yet to discover them all, they're out there. For Planck, science also had a strong moral dimension. It fosters honesty and the continual effort to refine and check our conclusions. Science elevates the moral value of life because it leads to a love of truth and reverence. He wrote, Love of truth means more than just announcing results that suit you. It means admitting mistakes when the data prove you wrong. Reverence is that capacity to stand in awe before the incomprehensible grandeur of reality while still maintaining your investigative drive. Ask yourself, could you surrender years of work if you suddenly realized your theory contradicted experimental data? Or would you stubbornly bend the facts to fit your ego? Planck saw this as the ultimate test of the human spirit. Our thirst for truth must outweigh our pride. Exploring Max Planck's legacy leaves us with many unresolved puzzles. Which exact kind of scientific realism did he champion? He held that reality exists independently of the observer. But how does that align with later interpretations of quantum mechanics? Was Planck genuinely Christian or more of a deist? His personal statements varied. He praised the virtues of religious traditions, attended Lutheran services, but rejected the idea of a personal God. Might Planck have reshaped the philosophy of science more profoundly if not for the tragic events of both world wars? Each question could warrant its own deep dive. But one thing is clear, Planck was not just a scientist who invented the quantum hypothesis. He was a thinker whose worldview seamlessly fused the quest for empirical laws with a yearning for spiritual depth. Isn't it surprising how a theoretical physicist, capable of poring over radiation calculations for weeks, could also be a philosophical, and in his own way religious, mind? This raises age-old questions. Does science actually need religion or philosophy? Or is scientific work self-sufficient, relying only on math and observation? Let us know in the comments how you see this issue. Perhaps your perspective will be the very bridge that connects scientists and those who rely on pure faith. Share this video with your friends, especially anyone who's curious about the limits of science, the role of faith, and the eternal search for meaning. As Planck himself said, every step toward real knowledge leads us to the threshold of a deeper, new mystery.
Let's end with Max Planck's own words. Science can lead us to the threshold of the unknowable, but it cannot cross it. Yet the deeper we penetrate phenomena, the more distinctly we feel the breath of a great mystery that moves us to both trembling and wonder. In that admission lies the key to Planck's entire life. He lived to open new frontiers in physics, but he never shied away from looking beyond science's boundaries, where philosophy, ethics, and perhaps faith begin. Maybe that holistic vision of the world is precisely what brought humanity its quantum revolution. After all, like every great pioneer, Planck dared to step into the darkness, a step toward the unknown, where our most important meanings and discoveries are born. Thank you for watching until the end. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. What do you think of the way Max Planck combined science and faith? Let us know in the comments. See you next time and remember, behind every major discovery stands a brilliant mind and a great mystery that inspires them to search on.